some flashy art, right? I think so. I think oh, we're nice. going to talk about nice. art. Yes, let's freaking go. <laughs> I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I did the last time. Oh. Remember earlier I was talking about how a lot of people make the comparison between Secret of Mana and Chrono Trigger. Yes, you were saying that. Apparently, Chrono was supposed to be the main character of Secret of Mana. What? When they were developing this game for the the edition that Sony and and Nintendo were working on when they were developing that edition for the the Super Nintendo, yeah, they were. Sorry, I'm I'm I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Keep going. <laughs> he was supposed to be in the game, which is why his art style was so similar, his hair and everything. Yeah. So I guess they just tweaked the character a bit when they decided you know like that deal fell through and then they decided to take the game in a completely different direction that's why you'll often get comparisons so cool my favorite game of all time is chrono trigger to learn that right now was just like wait a second so some of these games are like my favorite of all time i didn't even know that they were crisscrossing here crisscrossing there like what the heck i know you can't see me i really want to show you some cool stuff about secret of mana one thing that i really love is when we look at the box art for the Japanese version and the American version, they're the same. Well, mostly they're the same. Yeah. Normally, when we talk about like box art between Japan and America, sometimes Japan, Europe, and America, they localize or they change certain things about it. They want the American market to have a certain look or whatever. There's also a lot of this goes on with like Kirby games. And here's Secret of Mana. This is the American box art. As you can see, very beautiful features that same key art here of the mana tree. And look at how big the mana tree is compared to the characters. This I love that aspect. It's big. It's very big. The Japanese box, which is, why is there a big two there? Well, this is Siken Densetsu 2. This is not the first game in the series. Same. I did not realize this until I was an adult. And I want to say it's once you start finding like emulators and things of that nature where you were able to be like, oh, I'll get this wrong and this wrong. Oh, Secret of Mana 3? What is this? Oh, it's Siken Densetsu? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did not. I was like, wait a minute. Hold up. Hold a phone. Are there other games? games that I need to play like what's going on here in terms of like the actual game like this one is a little bit you know it's got a little bit more design aspect to it where this is just the game but then you've got this like beautiful box and stuff and one thing that I really want to look at is the character art in the back I love this let me tell you something in the I don't have the book for the Super Nintendo game anymore it got lost to time but in this in the american super nintendo book all of these characters were in there like these clay looking characters i always loved it because first of all that clay feel as something about it just always felt like soft and plushy looking so i just always yeah, had this okay. like affinity towards it i always wanted to draw it and as a kid i used to draw these characters all the time but i just so always cool. loved them and i wish that they made them into a figure but they're in the american game book as well but i just always thought that this design was really cool so yeah you got the manic tree here and then the illustrator of this main artwork is named Hiro Isono who unfortunately passed away died in like I think 2013 but he is the illustrator of this main artwork and then there was a different person that did the character design that I believe is done by multiple people which I'll show you in the other book when Randy's content was cut down to shoehorn the game into the cartridge Square had some extra material left over for Chrono Trigger so let me go into the book because the cool thing about yeah. the book is that it has notes from the illustrators themselves and it even goes to talk about what inspired them to create some of the artwork the way that it did this is another image of the main artwork this came with this book that i'm about to show you called the art of mana and it's got some like cool character artwork on the back from the other mana games which is like oh, really super that? neato i think final fantasy legend is the first game in the mana series oh. there are a lot of enemies where the design is exactly the same in the Super Nintendo game. I could even like show you, this is the Japanese booklet that came with the game. I'll show that afterwards. You'll get illustration comments from Hiromichi Tanaka and Koichi Ishii 
who did the character artwork for this game. The key art here with those same, like, okay. you know, the same clay characters. And then Flammy back here flying, of course. And right. the big, yes. yo, I need this Flammy as a plush. It's I so bet. cute. Oh my yes. gosh. Look at his little tooth. So freaking cute. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I want to talk about Flammy first is that Flammy was based on Falcor from the never ending story. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you said that because to me, that's why I was so like into Flammy was that I was big into the never ending story as a kid, even though it was like terrifying at the same time. I never knew that. Like, I just thought, okay, they're like similar, but I didn't know they actually were like, yeah, we're, we, that was inspired by. That is cool. I like that a lot. And it says, here he was made to be chubbier and friendlier <laughs> in this artwork <laughs> here the illustrator's note says randy is a hothead deep down but he isn't fully confident yet he grows over the course of the adventure he was written to be one year younger than prim who's the girl so it was easy for him to be treated like a little brother prim is a mystery why her ears are pointed but she was designed to be a young girl who appeared strong-willed but also had a tender side which you'll definitely see in the game because there was a part where she saves randy from being eaten alive and cooked in a pot and afterwards she kind of like calls him names and stuff but then kind of grows on her and then they become friends and blah 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 she's got to be like the tough girl at first <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that because the very first time i ever played the game you can actually completely skip that scene you can that's true i think i did do it by accident one time and wait a minute what happened yeah and when i was watching i want to say either my mother or one of my brothers play the game and they didn't do what i did they they, they walked down the path to what you just talked about where he gets captured and then she has to save him i was just like oh my gosh what i can't believe you can even do that papoy who's the sprite he was designed to be a neutral character who looks at things somewhat differently when compared with relatively straightforward randy and that's Prim. the that's the note from tanaka here in this note i really love this because this is where you can really see artist illustrative style. This person, I think his name is Sinichi Kamioka, went on to design a lot of games within the Mana series. So that's why you have this reoccurring kind of style with these characters in the other series. You could say that this is where the characters really begin. When I saw the character sprites, I thought, well, I guess I don't have to bother making them anymore. A character drawn by Tetsuya Takashi Takahashi, his outline looked like Kurobe from the children's anime series Jungle Kurobe. I don't know that anime series. He acts as the go-between for Randy and Prim, and he's always wishes for everyone's happiness on his own. And Kameoka, most well-known girl character. Oh, this is his most well-known girl character. Okay, cool. A young girl who is embodiment of strength and will and kindness. She has a ponytail and clothing like Akubi-chan from the classic anime series The Genie Family. I have to look oh. up these animes now. Dude. Same, I'm like, that sounds cool. I really love, I love how she always has her arms crossed. Yeah, cause you know, I'm imposing. I know, know. like she's trying to be tough. Yeah. I love cats and Nico <laughs> is one of the characters in the game that yeah. is always around to sell you items when you really need it. Character was created because I wanted a race of greedy cats. We were going for a <laughs> mana version of Puss in Boots. I yes. pictured him as being stingy. You can rely on him to solve any problem you have as long as he gets paid, but he can't be trusted. It's true because there'd be different sections where you could go and buy from him and his prices were absolutely outrageous for real his prices are double and you're just like yeah. um excuse me i guess convenience because you're there you know instead of having to go yeah. all the way back to a town i think this note here is really funny about luca who's like the first sage that you meet a sexy water maiden i had an image oh. in my mind of starsha drawn by liji matsumoto so they did make her sexy because i remember in the beginning of the game the randy the main character he's like you're 200 years old Gemma this guy he's like don't you talk to her like that <laughs> And I just thought, I always thought that that part was funny. <laughs> it's so funny you say that because that does, that does ring a bell now. Yep. They said that this character is like Bogart from Final Fantasy Adventure, which I don't think I've ever played that game. This is the Cannon Bros. Who it's funny because like, I remember another part in the game. They make these kind of jokes very often. They say that like his wife is very hot, but he looks like very regular. <laughs> and you're like, isn't this a kid's game? <laughs> yeah, right. You're like, what's going on here? <laughs> now we're up to the mana 
favorite. Out of all of these, do you have a favorite? Oh, my favorite was definitely the, the look wise mm -hmm. was the the shade. Shade. Oh yes. Look wise, it was the shade, but actual usability, I love the gnome because I was so good at spamming that attack. You know the spell when it came to like dropping the big old dirt pile. I loved that big old ball of dirt, and it would hit the enemy, it'd break apart, and then you do it again, and. <laughs> That spell, I do recall a lot of enemies being weak to gnome magic. Yeah. I think my favorite gnome magic, though, was the diamond one. Oh, I really okay. loved that one. I really loved that one. The dirt was good. Good gnome, no matter what. <laughs> exactly. But I think look-wise, I think Luna was my favorite. I love gold. I just, oh. I love All right. So if you're thinking about Ash, you're thinking about like, okay, what does she love? Think about gold. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think, okay, this artwork, I think is from like when they remastered it this is from when they remastered it they remastered it on the playstation but yeah this is i mean i think this still counts as secret of mana too yeah. they did a really really awesome job and i really like looking at the difference i love how they redid shade here and then this artwork is like Whoa. it's some of my fa this piece right here is one of my favorites and i think this illustrator is the same illustrator did artwork also for The Legend of Zelda. And that artwork was featured in Nintendo Power. Oh, so. how cool. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just, okay, I know this is not Secret of Mana, but I just want to show real quickly in Legend of Mana when I was talking about the enemies. Yeah. So if you look right here, like this enemy is reused. This enemy is reused this enemy the rabbi a lot of yes. these enemies are are reused in secret of mana this gall fish the snowman a lot of them oh this the the lizard the ghost playing that game i was like wait a minute they must be related and that's really 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 cool yeah. and i think it's cool because it shows that there is you know this much longer lore to this game outside of how awesome just the standalone secret of mana was this is the japanese booklet that came with the game of course beautiful artwork inside as well there's that artwork i was talking about before you cool. know what it is i miss manuals with games by far there was something so special about it and you always want to be careful when putting them back away in the whole box right You're like no don't don't catch the edges don't you know mess it up the thing about those booklets is that they had lore and background story in there that you might not have always gotten in the game i always have to show this whenever i talk about secret of mana because this is the strategy guide that i used when i was a little ash playing the game for the first time. I, I love that. I don't know how many times I went through that book over and over and over again. It treated the walkthrough like a story. When he reached yeah. the water palace, the boy walked up the entrance without hesitation. But when he came to a deep chasm, his way was blocked. He discovered a switch on the floor. Stepping on it caused a bridge to appear. They made it into a narrative. And I really love that. They gave deeper illustration into the armor, the weapon. Yes. Oh my gosh. Because it made it brought to life some of these weapon, like the up weapon upgrades we were talking about earlier, where it was just like, oh, this is so darn cool. And it's because of that manual, not manual, the strategy guide that you have right there. It was just like, it made it so much more impactful. Before you go ahead and transition over to Robo Trek, I would like to show off a little bit of my fun that I have here, Secret of Mana. My brother got this for me about three years ago for my birthday. Nice uh, setup here for what's my brain at? What's this type of art style called? Be uh, the beads. The perlers. There Perler we go. Thank beads. You. Yes. Yeah. The art. Aside from the American box art, which features an ominous Death Star looking space station, it was very clear once you have the opening title screen that Robotrek was actually directed towards a younger audience. Now, I was in that younger audience because I was what? This came out in like 94. I was like nine. Maybe I wasn't quite nine yet. Maybe I was eight going on nine. So this definitely fit perfectly right into that time frame as its japanese name would imply it's actually supposed to be more about fun and funny than this constantly bleak idea that the world is on the edge of collapse but the problem was there was such a disconnect between the japanese way that they were doing it and then the u.s way of how they were trying to you know get it out there it did not sell as well as it should have we'll talk about that a little bit later but 
that's why maybe for some of you this is going to be a hidden gem one of the things that goes on before we actually start showing off some art pieces here is that the enemies you encounter don't vary a whole lot as many of the enemies are reoccurring sprites with a different color scheme maybe they now have an added weapon that makes them different and more powerful each environment does have its own unique enemies when you're going through an area and you're going to take on more enemies it's the same type of enemy but an upgraded version but when you go to a new area you are now seeing new and different types of enemies that are specific to that type of region now bosses are extremely large and very creative in design most people say is that the the ai for it wasn't too threatening now as a kid i'm gonna say what the heck are you talking about it was terribly threatening i was scared i was sweating I was like, oh my gosh, I need to save before I go here. So I don't know what they're talking about. I think some people are being a little overly critical there. In this game, you were able to go ahead and get pretty overpowered early enough on, and that's why I think they took that stance. What I do want to bring up is some of the really cool things I think you already started showing off there. So right here, this box art, this is what I grew up on, and this game was not advertised. Folks, if you like, this game was not advertised in the US. At simple. all? There was, no, there was no real advertising campaign. The only way you were going to know about it is if you were already subscribed to something like nintendo power mm. or if you already knew about other games that were similar of the, of the enix line of games otherwise you had no real idea that robot truck is there and the amount of game titles that were sold for it is only twenty thousand for the u.s kind of gives you a good idea oh yeah i guess nobody really got to know that that game existed i was a kid when it came to being in toys r us i don't know if anybody else remembers toys r us growing up uh me <laughs> i would go up and down the video game aisle and i'd be looking at the things then look at how much how expensive the game was then i'd look at the game box art then i moved to the next one and i just kept on doing that back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and this box art right here made me feel like I want to try it. I wonder, you know what I'm curious about? I wonder if this was one of the first games Enix brought out. Like what? Because I'm surprised to hear that they didn't market this. But then like, did other Enix games get marketed like Seven Saga, Brain Lord, and all that other stuff? I'm curious. Which is like something I'll talk about a little bit later, but I'll go ahead and oh. answer that for the moment, is that there were games that came before this. It's just what happened to them is they ran into a budgeting issue and oh. decided we'll just go ahead and not market it i i don't know who made that final decision but again if you're talking about you're trying to take advantage of a younger market you know 10 and below well unless the parents were already pro video games which in those early 90s not as many parents were really oh yeah video games are good for my kid a lot of times they were getting like the the misconception that was being put out there that maybe video games aren't so good for my children right right that came down to a lot of times like did the kid make sure while he was in the toy store and says i want it i want it i want it that kind of feeling right i remember being a kid and seeing this box art and being like that looks cool i kind of want it this box art's the whole reason why i decided to take a chance on the game and then when i got into the game i was totally down for it even though it's kind of started off a little bit cheery once it starts introducing things like these enemies called hackers i was so into the hacker genre the, ha the hacker trope for the the 90s or whatever this here is actually the Japanese version. Very different. And very different. And what's so funny is this is beautiful. It's yeah, really like, bright. It's like such yes. a stark contrast to the other one where the other one is like brooding and like out in space. There's something ominous going on. This is like, oh, we're going to have a fun time. 100% agree. Because look, this one's got characters on the cover. You, you, you got your hero character. That's the inventor, right? You've got a robot on there. You got the hackers. You had this other nice lady we, we'll learn about uh, a little bit later. And then you have one of the first bosses in the whole game. When you have the other one, you're like, I have no clue what's going on. I, I think life is almost ceasing to exist. But like something's going on in that, that weird Death Star looking thing. And I got to find out what it I is. I know. I feel like the <laughs> Borg are going to come after me in that other yeah, game. I think it's really cool to see us. I think this art right here would be if you were not going to market it parents would be more likely to pick this up for their kids definitely look at look at this look at how it's like two different worlds right here most games like they're different but this is vastly different yeah yeah yeah. and that's why i thought it was so important to bring it up because is this the same game <laughs> it goes to show like how editing and perspective can really change how you look at something or how you think about something. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that because the name Robotrek is so similar to Robotech and I was really into Robotech. That combination of things I was like drawn into. The box art, I still would have been in, 
down for slapstick but the name slapstick i would have been like hmm, hmm. is it you know i don't know that kind of confuses me because i wasn't you know as a young kid so the understanding the slapstick type of comedy wasn't going to quite resonate with me versus an adult i'm like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna check that out for sure yeah. and you know what i'm noticing about this too i really like how the letters are like tools like you got a hammer yeah. here you got a saw here you got a screwdriver right here you, they, they, you could tell there was definitely love put into it even though it was supposed to be a sillier more friendly art title a couple of pages are from the uh slapstick version of it and i just think how cool is that art right there to go obviously I, i'm sorry folks i can't read japanese but if i had that manual i'd just be constantly looking at that you I'm, know, oh, I just be drawn it. It's so cute, and I love the little kitty cat on the yeah, plane. You, you, little tiny kitty cat just chilling. <laughs> Even though you're flying in, in air, and it's like you probably should be strapped in, buddy. But <laughs> definitely 80s, 90s anime. I agree with you, Azor. Like it has this like gold line, you know, bright color, almost watercolor kind of feel. And so I don't have too much more besides. I just thought it was a really cool piece, and especially for those that might have played Robo Trek in the states, they might not have had a chance to see the Japanese manual. And so I really wanted to bring that one up because I thought that was heckin' cool. Let's Let's go ahead and show off some of the sprites. But I thought it was really cool to see how they had separated all of these different pieces of the sprites. And like throughout the game, these are uh, the different situations you're gonna be in even, right? So you have even points in the game where you're crawling on the ground. So they have that sprite where he's uh, he's down on all fours and he's just kind of crawling. There's times when he's reading the books that Ash is talking about. There's other times where there, there actually has to be a robot version of you. That's why the head is separated from your oh, character. Oh, I was wondering about that and then there is even times when you have to go and miniaturize yourself right. and if you notice there's two sizes of small ones the one in the middle is when you are on the world map but the uh, tiny tiny one is when you have to miniaturize yourself as part of one of the dungeons i remember now oh my <laughs> gosh now you're really bringing back memories of the first time i played this game <laughs> and i also thought it was cool they had like the level up or go and the go would be you know all right, attack. That's what it's supposed to be like. You got your charge up, boom, that little graphic pops up. Like, okay, go and attack now. And then you're supposed to do your move with your robots. This is like a common thing for RPG characters in the Super Nintendo time. With the red hair, like the big red hair. <laughs> I mean, Secret of Mana, his hair is kind of reddish. Chrono Trigger, definitely. Yeah, it's like is, a yeah. trope at this point. It really is. I, I, I want to say my my guess is is that it was less likely for because this was all obviously Japanese made originally. Red hair is less likely, or at least assumedly the perception was less likely back then in your 90s. So of course you're gonna have a couple more of the ones of the the main character on there, but then you're gonna have robots that you're fighting against in the game. So this, th that blue robot is a really early enemy that you deal with. On the way to like your to the first k that you're about to go the, to the which really close right to my shoulder over here this is all you see of your father to begin with oh really in the very beginning you just get to see like the back side of him and then he runs off <laughs> it's like oh where where'd my father go <laughs> then you have the hackers mm -hmm. looking the opposite direction I, I don't know why they're only looking the opposite direction mm -hmm. and then i'm trying to remember who the far far right one almost kind of like a dr wiley hairstyle going on over there i was. think that was isn't that the guy that first teaches you how to use R&D maybe that's who it is now let's actually talk about that gal real quick that gal is actually supposed to be your main character's mother oh but she's an android what y'all kind of just simmer on that for a moment <laughs> I didn't know that I didn't know that until I, I I was researching for this and I was like oh oh you know what I also okay. love about this? There's some sprites in this game of like cats and dogs. Yes. There's lots of cute animals in this game. And I think there's a point in the game where you can actually talk to the animals because I think you like turn into a mouse or something. Well, like, actually you are correct. What you do is in the game, because you're an inventor, you actually create a device that allows you to talk to the animals. And now the animals and you can have a conversation. These ones will be just quick ones. If we just want to go ahead and show off the controller R&D room, because I thought this was just so quirky. It it was so perfect. I love it because this is totally a Famicom controller, right? My head, I was all like, well, that kind of looks like a Super Nintendo controller. Well, good enough for me, you know, not realizing that there was Famicom controllers that had the different color buttons. I'm used to, you know, our old school grays and purples and, you know. Why does 
the controller anytime I see it like that have like other colors and it wasn't until I was adult that I realized oh the Super Famicom had the cool color buttons <laughs> Yes. Then the very last piece is just a really cool thing. Like when, once you beat the game, there's a bunch of slides of different s scenarios throughout the game that it's going to show you. So I just want to show one because for those that want to play this game and beat it, you can go ahead and see these slides. These types of things are produced later at the end of the game if you watch all the way through the credits. I remember what this scene was, but I think basically this hacker like screws up and like runs over somebody's thing or not knocks the gal over so her shoe falls off and he's like uh oh like i was supposed to do that and then you know there's like a little dialogue that goes with it before he disappears but i was just like oh I, I saw this i was like i gotta i gotta pick this one up too oh my gosh cool well that was really <laughs> really awesome